Oliver's 8, a peaceful haven on the Thames, unless you've disturbed geese when you visit to complete essential work. They were rearing up at us, they were very, 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 very vocal, and on several occasions we had a few chases. But after several weeks of being here, we were accepted as part of their family. This small island in the middle of the Thames at Kew is an unexpected haven to an incredible range of wildlife. The island is inhabited by Canada geese mainly for breeding and they use the island for safety because obviously you know generally foxes can't reach the island. It also has robin, blackbird and other bird species that breed in the trees. What's more important for the island though are a number of snail species which are very small. Some of them are three or four millimetres long and the tulip door snail and the German hairy snail are just two. There are possibly other species found on, uh, on some of the islands too. Um, without real detailed surveys, we don't really know exactly where all these species are. They're very rare in London. In fact, in some, some of the species are only found in the Thames. Oliver's Eight, named after Oliver Cromwell, used as a toll gate for river users in the 18th century and home to a smithy and boat repairers in days gone by, has been undergoing a three-year facelift courtesy of the Port of London Authority. It's very important. The work that the PLA has done on the stonework around the outside of the island, um, without it, the island would wash away. And therefore, it would provide no habitat for the snails, no habitat for birds. So it's really important that that's maintained annually and kept to a standard that the water isn't going to damage the island and, and take all the soil away, because ultimately, that's what it will do. And then all the trees will go and everything will go. So you'll end up with no island. Well, for the trees around the stonework, around the edges, we, we're trying to ensure that we don't get any more root growth and protrusion into the revetments because that disrupts the um, stability of the, um, the stonework around the revetments and uh, we would then be back to the situation where we'd have tidal erosion and we, we would start losing the stability of the, of the banks themselves. With regards to the trees on the island, um, we are here then to make sure that they are living safely and they're healthy because it's the root systems that hold the whole eight together. So the tree surgeon makes a visit once a year, twice a year, just to check to make sure that we have sufficiently stemmed their growth within the revetment. And today he's here to check that out and to actually apply some eco pellets to, main, to keep it stunted. Working on the island in the middle of the Thames was a challenge for the PLA, which owns Oliver's 8. How, for example, do you get the stone for repairs across to the island? I'd quantified most of the material and we had um, well over a 120 tonne of rock uh, which came in a barge and we, helped, and we had to individually bag each tonne um, because of the handling problems we had on the island. So everything we brought to the island was either bagged or palleted uh, and couldn't be manhandled. That was the problem and it took the best part of a week to get all of the material onto the island. Well, they've done some tree work, so the tree works have helped open the, the light to the ground, so hopefully there's a bit more uh, vegetation appearing on the, on the surface of the ground, whereas before it was very dark, very shady, um, and very little vegetation. Part of the works was to put in a, a fence uh, around the a particular area just to stop geese from grazing it, uh, to see if the, the geese were having an impact on the ground floor. The project cost £30,000 and the PLA worked closely with the London Wildlife Trust to make sure that this unique environment was properly cared for and set for the future. But to begin with, the project wasn't well received by people living near the island. The shock, uh, resentment, horror, um, uproar, we, we had it all. But it was just a question of um, putting out some a few, few kind words <laughs> and explaining that if they wanted to, uh, the, the eight to be um, part of their environment, then we needed to make sure that we could maintain it. This is the, the sad part of the, the whole of the, uh, the refurbishment of the, of the eight, and that we try to maintain all these big mature trees. But on this occasion, this one that we'd been trying so desperately to look after, um, just died of natural causes. The island has been taken to the heart of local people and so one day, when a storm blew over an old willow on the island which was left hanging dangerously low into the Thames, Lee and his team knew some people would be upset. Now it was with great sadness that I had a phone call from a Mr and Mrs Gobi who lived just across the other side of the river to say what have you done with my tree 
and um, we had to kindly inform them that the tree had, had died a death of natural causes um, because I was quite saddened with it by myself and most of my team that had been taken down a lot of trees we felt that we needed to put something back so uh, the only way that we could do that was to say well we've lost great willow let's put back a new willow and we'll put that one back. I think we've got one of the best, most loveliest, uh, nicest rivers in the world um, and, and for me to have my hands on it, I've grown up on the River Thames as a, as a, as a constructor and now I've got the pleasure of actually maintaining what we've, what we've put in for everybody to enjoy and everybody likes everything to do with the River Thames.